In the summer of 1995, I was 11, sleeping late, home alone at around 10 to 11 a.m., while my parents were at work. I got woken up by the doorbell, so instinctively, I hurried up down the corridor. But before I rushed to open the door as I normally would, I remembered the many times my mom scolded me for opening the door without asking, who is it, first, or at least looking through the peephole to make sure that it was safe to open, especially after having some previous creepy experiences that have already taken place at this point. I ask, who is it? But all I heard was some unintelligible mumble. So I brought a chair and stepped on it in order to look through the hole. We lived in an apartment building and on the right of our door was the elevator, and then the staircase. Since the staircase windows were on the far left corner, there was not enough natural light to help me see who it was. I just saw a male with some colourful t-shirts standing outside. I repeated the question, and then strained to hear the answer. He said he was looking for Miss Spencer. That's my mother's maiden name. And I said she was at work. To give you some context, both of my parents are doctors. And I don't know if that sounds weird for the US or the rest of the Western world, but in Eastern Europe in the 90s, it wasn't uncommon for grateful patients to sometimes stop by, wanting to give thanks by bringing fresh fruit and vegetables from their garden, especially those which my parents had helped, but they couldn't pay. So the man said he was bringing something for my mum, except even in the murky light, I could see that his hands were empty. I asked where it was, and he said he left the package at the stairs. At this point, I'm starting to feel uneasy, that something isn't right. So I had to be cautious and lie and tell him I didn't have keys. I said my parents were at work, and they told me to not open the door to strangers. So when they come back, they can help him. He starts to get agitated, and said he couldn't wait that long, and then says that he is actually bringing meat, so it would get spoiled in the heat if it's left outside. I start to hesitate because I'm thinking, well, what if he's telling the truth? Will I get in trouble for letting the meat spoil? But then I look through the spy hole again and see his hair, which means he has his ear pressed to the door listening in. That spooked me. And I said to him, sorry, I can't help you. Please go away and come back later when I'm not alone. He once again says that he does not have the time to come back. And he offers to leave and says he will leave the package at the stairs. So when he is gone, I will not be afraid to open the door and retrieve it myself. I keep quiet and intently observe him as he goes down the stairs and makes the noise of climbing down. And then I freeze, because in the silence that ensued, I was just about to really open the door and check, when I saw part of his t-shirt sleeve behind the corner of the stairs. He was hiding there, probably hoping I would open the door thinking he was gone, when in fact, he was preparing to do, gosh knows what, pounce on me, break into the apartment. I got so scared, I froze and just kept on watching, standing on the chair behind the door. And finally, after what seemed like hours, but was probably no more than 10 minutes, I heard him really descend down the stairs. I didn't open the door. I called my mom's hospital, but she couldn't be put through. So I waited for them to come back home in the afternoon. They both got worried but proud that this time I finally did the right thing. A few hours later, all the kids from the building and I were at the little square slash playground area in front of it. It was buzzing with kids running around, so it was completely safe. And my best friend Nina and I were sitting on one of the benches, when suddenly a strange man approaches us and stands next to one of the benches. He says, Are you Jemima? I hesitantly confirm, although my heart starts to beat faster as I recognize the voice. It was the same man from the morning. 
This time I'm not alone. So I instinctively press myself closer to Nina. When he says, Well, I'm bringing something for your father, Matthew. But it's in the car, and I've parked it on the street. Come with me to help me bring it. Encouraged by my friend's presence, and all the people around, I say to him that actually my dad is home. So if he waits there, I'll go get him. And he could help him bring whatever he needs from the car, as I am little, and can't carry anything heavy. The moment I said it, the guy quickly got quiet and walked away. Not running, just walking very briskly. My friend already knew what happened this morning, and I ran to my apartment, told my dad, and he ran in his shorts to chase after the guy. But of course, there was no trace of him. My dad started asking away then, as once again something typical for Eastern European countries. The grandma sitting on the balconies and benches looking at everyone and everything going on, like a live security system. Nobody had noticed anything except one grandma, an old lady living alone on the first floor, who says that a guy approached her earlier while she was sitting on her balcony and started asking her about our family, then tried to ask her for money to pay for the meat he was bringing, as he told her that my parents had purchased it from him. She told him that she had no money, but stupidly gave him a lot of information like my name. We never heard anything about the guy, but thank God, those questions are still puzzling me. What did he want? Why did he say my mum's name? But then said that he was bringing something for my dad. Was he actually focused on me? I hope that I never have to find out. I also remember that when school started after that summer, there was another situation that seemed weird and possibly dangerous. I was coming back from school and I saw my friends gathered in front of the apartment building, but in the entrance furthest away from the one I lived in. I was talking to them when I heard my mum calling me. I turned and saw she was heading to work, going towards the bus stop, but she called me to go to her. And when I did, she told me that she wants me to immediately go back home. I grumbled but obliged, so from my point of view, what happened was this. I reach our entrance of the building, and open the door when I feel someone coming close behind me. But I don't turn and think nothing of it. Then I start climbing the stairs quickly, because I was afraid to take the elevator alone. But I heard that there were equally quick footsteps following me up the stairs. And just when I was fiddling for my keys about to unlock the door, I heard my mum's extremely worried voice shouting my name from downstairs, which startled me. But then the footsteps stopped right before the person reached my floor, and they started descending back. Then my mum climbs to our floor, hugs me, and we lock the door and she tells me what actually happened. She was going to work, but sees me talking to my friends. She then looks around and sees a creepy looking man standing nearby staring at us, while we are all oblivious to his presence. So she calls my name and tells me to go home. She turns and starts for the bus stop, but then an impending sense of dread consumes her and she looks back, seeing that the guy is no longer where he was, but actually now following me. And the moment she turns, she actually sees how I enter the building, and he disappears a few seconds behind me. My mum starts running in sheer panic, then reaches the entrance and shouts my name, and then she hears his footsteps back down, and when she reaches the ground floor, he passes her. But my mum said he gave her such an evil menacing glare, as if he wanted to strangle her for preventing his intentions or something. She said alarm bells rang in her head, and her whole body was full of adrenaline, ready to fight if she must, because she felt I was in real danger. This happened when I was around nine years old. I'm 25 now and it's something I will never forget. It gives me goosebumps to this day. I live in a terraced house, four houses combined, and my neighborhood and I each have our own little patio. 
There's a small road ten meters from my yard, where people do their Sunday walks on. Only a small fence separates my yard and patio from that road. I live in a pretty crowded area, with several of these terraced houses spread around in my neighborhood. So seeing people walking on that road is pretty normal for me. Seeing random people standing on my patio is not. When I was nine, I usually got home from school about an hour before my mum got home from work. I live maybe fifty meters away from school, so my mum figured I was mature enough to be home alone for around an hour before she got home. This one day, I got home from school. I did the usual thing, which was to make sure I locked the front door, and double checked that the back door leading to the patio was also locked. I was nine. Being alone was a little scary, even though it was in the middle of the day, and only for an hour. I then rushed to my room upstairs to play as much PlayStation as possible, before my mum came home and made me do homework. While playing, I heard this noise coming from outside my window, as my room was located one floor over the patio, with a view to the road, as I told you about before. It was kind of like the sound of cats, but my cats had been missing for over three months. Hope sparked, and I thought, "Oh my god, did he finally come back?" I ran downstairs to check if it was my cat, but the sight that met me still gives me goosebumps to this day. There was a guy standing on my patio, a tall guy with black hair covering half of his eyes. Making him look like the male version of the girl from The Ring. I could hear him making high-pitched sounds, almost like a cat meowing. A brown liquid was running down his mouth. I could see him spitting out my dad's stomped cigarettes. He was actually eating them from the ashtray. I was frozen observing this. Eventually, snapped out of it. And screamed so loudly that the man must have heard it. He didn't react. He kept on eating from the ashtray. I ran upstairs to my room, locked the door, and called my mum, who then called the cops. I have never been more terrified in my life. Laying in bed under my sheets, shivering with fear, as I hear this creepy guy make those horrible noises. Whilst eating cigarette stumps from the ashtray on the patio, I kind of blacked out for a moment, because the next thing I remember is the police arriving on the road by my yard. I hear them talking to the guy, saying stuff like, "What are you doing? Get over here, or we'll come down and arrest you," and so on. He didn't respond, but the high-pitched sound was more frequent and louder. I decided to look through the window, feeling safe now that the cops were there. I could see two police officers standing by my fence, one man, and a woman. I didn't see the creepy man, however, because he was standing directly one story under me, and my field of view. The police jumped the fence, and I remember hearing the creepy guy screaming louder than anything I've ever heard before. He charged the female police officer. With full force, and he knocked her out cold. The male police officer immediately then tased the guy, leaving him shaking on the ground, screaming still. The policeman struggled to keep him on the ground while putting handcuffs on him, but eventually made it. After a while, he managed to wake up the female police officer, who seemed to be badly hurt. He called for backup and an ambulance, and then. He sees me standing in the window above him. The expression on my face must have been something else, because he just looked at me and said, "I sure as hell hope you didn't see all of that." I started to cry. By this time, neighbors started to arrive, wondering what the hell was going on. One of my neighbors, an elderly woman, made me come down. And she took care of me until my mum got back. The police took the creepy guy with them in the car and left. Before they left, they promised to come back and talk to us about what had happened. 
This is where the story takes an unexpected turn. The male police officer came back later that night and sat down with me and my mum to talk. He explained that the guy on my patio was actually diagnosed with severe autism. He had escaped a facility where mentally challenged people lived, located around five kilometers from where I live. He explained that the guy had actually been living in my house five years ago, but had been forced to move when his mum, his only caretaker, died. The poor guy probably thought he would find his mum in my house. He missed the routines, and he missed living there with his mum. The police had to move him from the house that time five years ago, because he was extremely strong. From what I heard, he has extreme tensions in the body because of his autism, making his muscles grow stronger and stronger throughout the years. This was the reason he reacted the way he did when the police came that day. Still frightened, I told the police officer that he needed to make sure this would never happen again, and he promised it wouldn't. After a few sleepless nights, my life got back to normal. Three years went by, and the guy didn't come back, until a year ago. This time, my mum and dad had moved out. I bought the house from them, and I'm still living there today. I was enjoying my morning coffee on the patio when I see this random guy stopping on the road by my fence. He stands there, looking at me. I look at him and give him a nod, and then I hear the high-pitched noises. Oh shit, that's him. His hair had turned grey, but the high-pitched sounds made me realise. My heart started racing, and I instantly remembered the reason why he was back. I realised they must have managed to escape again, but I kept my cool a bit longer, because back then I was nine. I started to feel sorry for this guy, 16 years later, and he was back to look for his mum. I decided to carefully ask him if he wanted to come down to the patio. He instantly jumped the fence, and I started to think he would knock me out like he did to that police officer. He didn't. He smiled. I smiled, and I offered him to sit down. He didn't respond. I offered him to come inside, and he started laughing. We went in, and his face lit up with pure joy. He was home. It reminded him of the life he had with his mum. It almost made me tear up. All of a sudden, he sat down on my couch, turned on the TV, and switched directly to the cartoons. I observed him for a while. He was just completely focused on the cartoons. I just wanted him to enjoy the moment, so I didn't say anything to him. I realised I had to call the facility to let them know. The caretakers arrived ten minutes later, and after a lot of convincing, he got back up, crying, and they went back to the facility. I called the facility two days later, and we made a deal. His name is Tom, and I now consider Tom my friend. Every Sunday from the day he returned, Tom and his caretakers will visit me to watch cartoons. They say it's the highlight of his week. It makes my heart warm. Now, for several years, my thoughts were, let's not meet Guy on the patio eating from the ashtray. Now my thoughts are, let's meet every Sunday to watch cartoons. My friend, Tom. One evening, when I was 15 years old, I was at home, alone. My brother was at a football game, and my mum and dad had just left to eat dinner, out. I decided I wasn't hungry enough to warrant going out with them, and settled for them just bringing me home takeout. My parents hadn't been gone longer than 10 minutes. I was sitting in the living room on my laptop, when suddenly, I heard the sound of a car door slam. I glanced at the clock in surprise, because I knew there was no way my parents were back this early, unless they forgot something and turned around. So I sat my laptop down, and got up to go investigate. 
I gently pulled one singular blind down to peep out of the bay window in the kitchen that overlooks our driveway. It's twilight outside, so it's nearly dark, but still enough natural light hanging in the sky from the sun that I could make out a four-door car, not my parents' car, parked alongside the flower bed at the top of our long driveway. It has shrubs and trees that you could park on the other side of and have trouble noticing a car behind them. As my eyes rested on the car, I saw three men. I'm assuming they were all men because of their stature and size, wearing all black and masks concealing their faces. All exit the car together and start advancing towards the house. One branches off to cover the front yard and thus the front door. The second branching off to go behind the house, which leads to the back door that leads into our garage, which leads into our house. The third guy, however, was cutting across the yard heading to the side door, the one which I was currently standing next to. I snapped my head back and let the blind fall back into place, my heart doing a flip. I took a split second to process where I planned to hole up inside the house, so I would have the best chance of escaping. I chose my parents' bedroom because it's on the main floor right off the kitchen and right past the back corridor that leads to the garage. I knew it was also a risky place as it had two doors right outside their bedroom that two of the three seen villains were currently heading to but I wanted to hear and know where my opponents were the moment they entered the house. I nearly ripped their bedroom door off its hinges when I grabbed it and slammed it shut to lock it. I leapt across their bed and grabbed the phone and frantically started calling my parents. I called them first because I'd figured they'd be right down the road and would turn around and make it to the house in time to scare these creeps, but they didn't answer. I dialed my cousin who lives up the road two houses away, again because of the same reasoning of him being here so quickly. During all of this, my frantic panicked mind didn't even think to dial 911. I finally got my cousin to answer as I started to hear bangs at the door outside the bedroom. I knew before my cousin suggested that I needed to arm myself in case they broke into the house before he got there. I threw the phone down and took a deep breath before I slung the bathroom door open, knowing I was going to have to muster the courage to make a mad dash across the kitchen and grab the biggest butcher knife we owned, passing the doors on the way. As I passed by the narrow corridor that leads to the door connecting the garage and the house, I couldn't help but glance over to the door which had a window. There. I saw a man who chose to break off towards the back of the house. He had broken into the garage via the side door that leads from the outside to the inside of our garage. He was in my garage and staring at me just a few feet away, with only a flimsy pane of glass between us. My heart felt like it cut off. I had never had such a narrowing sense of dread in my life. I quickly whipped my head back towards the kitchen and bolted to the other side of it, throwing myself into the drawer and tearing through it to grab a knife. As I raced back towards my parents' bedroom, I could hear the man at the side door banging on it, and I could hear a guy banging at the front door, but no noise from the guy at the garage door. In that moment, I didn't care about anything but barricading myself in my parents' bedroom until I heard my cousin's truck. To this day, I'll never know what happened, but by the time my cousin got there, not two minutes after I initially called him, those guys were gone without a single trace. I didn't hear their car door slam as I did before. I didn't hear an engine crank. Nothing. But when I heard the familiar sound of my cousin's truck rush into my driveway, I mustered the courage to peek out of my parents' bedroom. I noticed none of the doors were open or had been forced open. When I realized I could come out, I went outside and found nothing. Cops had been called during this time. I'm assuming my cousin called them after hanging up with me, 
and I remember vaguely standing there frantically shaking with a butcher's knife still in hand. The cops, I could tell, were confused and possibly didn't even believe my story. In that moment, I even started to question it. I know what I saw. I know what I felt. The terrifying knowledge that someone was after our house. The paralyzing fear of knowing that you are about to experience hand-to-hand -hand combat with a criminal. The heart dropping. Adrenaline surging rush. All of it. It was real. Those men were there, and for whatever reason, I will never know or understand. After the guy in the garage saw me, they decided to book it out of there. Maybe they didn't realize I hadn't left with my parents and had been scoping the place and thought we'd left. Maybe they didn't want to commit to the crime with someone home because they thought it would make too much extra trouble. Maybe they were fathers and couldn't stand the thought of harming a child. To this day, the reason as to why they chose to leave me peacefully are what haunts me just as much as the event itself. Either way, to the three men who bum-rushed my house when I was 15, let's not meet again. This happened several years ago, when I lived with my ex-boyfriend. We had recently moved into a two-bedroom house and set to work turning it into a home. We turned the back bedroom into an office, as the house only had the one bathroom, and it could only be reached through this bedroom. We would have people crash on our sofa pretty regularly, and didn't fancy them have to traipse through our bedroom to get to the loo in the middle of the night. So we'd be living there for roughly one month when this event occurred. My ex was out with work colleagues, and I was home alone. I'd spent the early evening watching TV and eating takeout. A couple of times I heard some strange noises, but whatever. I would try and zone in on them to figure out what the hell it was. It would stop. It got later, and I decided to go upstairs and use the computer for a little while before heading to bed. At this point in time, we hadn't had our phone line installed, and I was still on a pay-as-you-go phone which had run out of credit. I basically had no way to communicate with anyone whilst I was in the house that night. So I'm sitting in the back room with only a small table lamp on that barely forms a glow whilst I'm typing away on my laptop when I heard noises again. It started as a light rattling noise, really faint, to the point I had to strain to see if I was really hearing it or imagining it. I shut my music off and tried to figure out what it was. I went into our bedroom and looked down to the front door. Nobody there. Go back into the back bedroom, but can't see much out the window. We had a small yard with a huge brick wall and a solid wooden gate with nothing to cast any light. But from what little I could see, there was nothing out back there either. I sat back down and switched the music on. Maybe ten minutes later, I hear this eerie screeching sound like metal on metal. Again, very faint. As if whatever was making it was trying to desperately be quiet. I was getting more than a little freaked out at this point. So I went into our bedroom to retrieve this heavy iron rod that we'd found when we built the back of the wardrobe. I didn't switch on any lights as I knew that that was going to alert any possible intruder to my location. Remember, I had no way of calling anyone, and I was getting more than a little concerned someone might actually be in my house. I made my way back into the office slash bedroom and closed the door as quietly as possible, before bolting it and lodging a chair under the handle. Nothing more happens for a good 20 minutes or so. I start to feel a little foolish for letting myself get worked up and put it down to being alone for the first time in the house. But I don't switch the music back on this time, which was lucky because I started to hear what sounds like two people whispering, both male voices. They didn't sound like they were coming from inside the house though. 
I had the office slash bedroom window open ever so slightly, and the sound seemed to be floating in from there. I headed into the bathroom to see if I could get a better look into the alley that the house backed onto. The office slash bedroom and the bathroom formed an L around the yard, with the bathroom extending further out. I climbed up onto the ledge and inched the window open to try and see out into the alley. I couldn't see a thing, but the whispering was loud and coming from directly behind my gate. I couldn't hear whole sentences, but heard enough to summarize whoever these men were, they'd seen us move in, and I'd seen we had quite a lot of valuable equipment. Guitars, computers, DSLRs, TVs, gaming consoles. I imagine they'd seen I was home alone, and had been waiting for me to go to sleep, and try to get into the house. I'd stayed perched there for what felt like an eternity until what seemed like the loudest thud in the world echoed up to me. They'd grown tired of trying to be stealthy, and one or both of them were throwing themselves at my gate, trying to break it down. I could see it shuddering under the blows, and could only imagine how large these men must be. I'm a tiny girl, all of five foot three, and at this point, weighed somewhere around 105 pounds. As you can imagine, I was white with terror. As I watched my gait groan from the stress, I sat, clutching that iron rod, trying to think where I could hide from them. Suddenly, a glaring light blinded me. At first I panicked and dropped out of sight, thinking they were shining a torch at the back of the house, but then I heard barking and shouting. I peeked out the window again and saw the house which was across the alley from us, had a floodlight installed, and it was illuminating both their own yard, mine, and the alley with the light. I heard grumbling and footsteps, as the two hurried down the alley. I stayed locked in that back bedroom until my ex-boyfriend drunkenly rolled in at about 4am. I didn't sleep a wink that night, and when I went into the yard in the morning, my gate was hanging on by one hinge, allowing easy access from the alley. When I looked at the back of it, the keyhole was covered in scratches, as if someone had tried to force the lock. If they hadn't woken the house behind us, I dread to think what would have happened. Let me start off this story by giving you a bit of background information. I'm a 19 year old male currently living in Melbourne, Australia. Keep in mind that I'm pretty short for a guy, only five foot eight, and not very muscular. As a result, I've always felt defenseless whenever I was confronted with people who were larger than me, which explains why I spent the majority of my teenage years at home, mainly because that's where I felt the safest. But in one moment of my life, that all changed. My entire perception on the notion of safety was completely and utterly destroyed. I was 17 when this took place. My parents had left for the weekend, as it was their 20 year wedding anniversary. I have three siblings, two of which are older brothers, both of whom have places of their own. My younger sister was staying at a friend's house during this particular weekend, so it was just me in the house. This is how I liked it. Nothing could prepare me for the fear that awaited me. There aren't words to describe the sheer horror I felt through my experience. On several occasions, I had read stories of people going through similar situations as my own but never truly understood them until that day. It was around 11 p.m. on Saturday. I was watching my favorite TV show upstairs when I thought I heard a noise coming from downstairs. I paused my show so I could hear the sound more clearly. My suspicions were confirmed when I heard what sounded like a faint knock at the front door. 
come to think of it. It sounded more like a tap. Now I'm a pretty paranoid person, so I would often jump to the worst case scenario in these types of situations. But on this particular occasion, I just dismissed the sound entirely and continued watching my show. After finishing a few more episodes, I decided to go downstairs to get a drink. Just to give you an idea of the way my house was laid out, this staircase is located directly opposite my front door. Just left of the staircase is a very small hallway, which leads into a larger room that contains my kitchen and the family room. In fact, the hallway is so small that you could practically see into the kitchen from the door. As I headed downstairs, I immediately noticed that the front door was unlocked. I knew this because the lock on the front door was positioned horizontally. This was a little alarming, as I could have sworn that I had locked it after my parents left for the weekend. In fact, I remember double checking it to be sure, like I previously mentioned, I'm a paranoid guy. In spite of this, I just locked it again and stupidly disregarded it. After I finished my drink, I decided to go to my bed because it was pretty late and I have to admit I was very tired. Before heading upstairs, I turned off all the lights in the house as this was routine whenever I went to bed. About 20 minutes into my sleep, I awoke to what sounded like the door closing downstairs. It couldn't have been the front door, as I was positive that I locked it before going upstairs. Plus, I knew that no one else had a key to the house other than my parents. Now, I've seen enough horror movies to know that you do not, under any circumstances, go investigate any unexplainable sound, especially when every gut instinct is telling you not to. But what I can say, in my sleep deprived state, I made a misjudgment. I very slowly walked downstairs, trying to make as little noise as possible. I knew that a few of the steps made creaking sounds whenever weight was applied to the center of the step. So I did my best to stay as close to the edge of each step as possible. By the time I got to the bottom floor, my heart rate was higher than it has ever been in the circumstances. By this time, my eyes had adjusted to the dark, so I could make out the outline of the furniture scattered throughout my house. And still to this day, I believe that is what saved my life. Had I bumped into anything, it would have given away my position. As I slowly peered my head around the corner of the staircase, Words cannot describe the sheer horror I felt when I saw the outline of a man standing in my kitchen. He was a very tall six foot five, well built, and I felt as though I was in a freezer as my blood ran cold. I was paralyzed with fear. I knew he hadn't seen me because he made no sudden movements or any change in his behavior that indicated otherwise. When I finally had the strength back in my legs, I forced myself to saunter backwards while trying not to make one sound, because if I did, I knew that I would be dead. The feeling a person gets when they know that each step they could take could be their last is a feeling I don't wish on my worst enemy. As I got closer and closer to the upstairs bedroom, I felt as though my heart had exploded in my chest when a loud creak echoed through the house. At that moment, I knew I was screwed. My entire life flashed before my eyes in one fleeting image. I sprinted upstairs and closed myself in the bedroom. The worst part was knowing that none of the doors in the house had locks on them, not even the bathroom. All he had to do was to turn the wooden handle to my bedroom and I'd be done for. The sound of boots thumping up the wooden stairs brought me closer to my death. 
I frantically looked around my room for anything to use as a weapon. There was nothing besides a pen laying on my desk. I grabbed it and held onto it so tight in anticipation that I actually started to feel the blood supply to my hand being cut off. I braced myself. The next thing I heard nearly made me throw up. I'll never forget the fear I felt till the day I die. A deep voice coming from directly outside my bedroom door which said, I know you're in there and I'm going to kill you. At that moment, the door burst open with force. Instinctively, I swung my arm towards it as hard as I could. And with a stroke of luck, I managed to drive the pen right into this guy's shoulder. He let out a blood chilling scream and collapsed on the floor in agony. I used this opportunity to sprint downstairs and out the front door where I immediately ran into my neighbor's house. I kept banging on the door until they opened up. After explaining what had happened, my neighbor called the police and I waited with them until they arrived. By the time they entered my house to investigate, the man was gone. To this day, I still don't know if they ever found him, but fortunately, I have never seen him again. I was about 13. This was a good five years ago. I was at my friend's house, where I don't think I was supposed to be because I have strict parents, and we were hanging out. My friend is two years younger than me, but we grew up together. So for the most part, everything was normal until there was a knock at the door. Now, we were at her house alone and were definitely not expecting anyone. I'm a pretty fearless person for the most part who has no regard for her own safety, but a strong regard for the safety of others. I walked to the door and peered through the curtains. Past the door, there was a man in his late thirties who was standing with a clipboard. His car wasn't in the driveway, but on the street by the house. I think, no, scratch that. I know he saw me because he began to speak. I'm here to fix your cable. My friend on the stairs has had people come to do things like this before, but her parents have always told her when and if it was happening. Her face looked confused and utterly terrified. She isn't the bravest, but I did have a bad feeling about the guy. So by now I think, okay, don't open the door and he will leave. A rational idea, right? Well, at this point, the man kept knocking and knocking. The knocking then turned to banging. He must have been kicking the door too, because the sound was so loud and violent that I thought the door was going to break. She lived on such a busy street that I'm incredibly unsure how none of her neighbors that knew she was home alone at the time heard any of the commotion. Of course, we panicked, but I knew I had to take control of the situation. My friend was in no state to move, let alone take the lead. I was 13 though, so I was out of my mind horrified. I snuck around to the kitchen and grabbed a knife. I checked the back door and went to my friend who was sat on the stairs, as the stairs are between each door, but have walls that go down each side. So we were out of sight. When I got back to the stairs, the knocking stopped. My heartbeat seemed to have stopped too, because it sounded like the world became empty. The front doorknob began to turn as he tried to open the door, which was followed by more silence. After maybe 15 seconds, I heard something that I was definitely not happy to hear. Now you see, if I were an adult, there was no way this man would say anything like that to me, right? His tone was that of a crazed man, and it left me feeling as if every bone in my body suddenly turned to jello. Either way, we sat very still. A couple of minutes passed and we thought that we were in the clear. That's when I heard gentle pulling followed by a loud banging on the backyard glass door. At this point, I grabbed my friend and bring her upstairs. I grab the phone and we go to her mum's room to get into the closet. I call the police, feeling physically ill and talk to the lady on the line. 
She questions us, and my friend had started crying. I answer her questions, and she tells me that someone's coming, and that I have to wait on the line. I feel like puking, but keep incredibly calm to ensure that my friend doesn't fall into a full-blown panic attack. She's known to get worked up easily, and couldn't keep her calm and take care of the situation at the same time. Eventually, the banging stops, and I begin to breathe again. Can you still hear him? I answer the officer with a no, and she tells me that I should check to see if he's still there. She informs me to be quiet and careful. I slowly climb down the stairs and peek at the back door. No one's out there. I walk to the front and step into the room with a window and basically crawl to it. When I peek my head over, I see the man sitting on the stairs outside on his phone. This just sends me into a frenzy, so I respond in a panic that he is. She tells me to go back and hide and the police are very close. Eventually, after a long time, there's banging on the door again. This time it ends quickly. A nice lady officer calls to us from outside saying we can come out. We go downstairs and see a male officer talking to the man, while the woman comforts us. Apparently the man works for the cable company, and was informed to go around back if no one was home and let himself in. I think anyone can see the floor in his alibi, but he had a clipboard and had God knows what on it, and the police checked and let him go. The woman told us she believed us and not him, but there wasn't much else they could do. I'd hate to think what could have happened had the man got in. I chalked it down to a cable guy that's really passionate about his work, but now I have to accept that it's most likely not the case. I hate to think that people like him who clearly have bad intentions get away so easily. Maybe I could understand if we lived in a bad neighborhood, but where we lived had always been so incredibly safe. So this happened to me on Thursday, April 25th and I still can't shake off how terrifying and strange it was. So I was home alone getting ready for my midday college class that morning, and I opened my blinds to let some natural light in. I glanced out my window to see a man in his mid-thirties wearing a baseball cap, roaming around my property, with his hands on his hips, walking around with a lot of weird confidence. But our yard is kind of like a cliff, and it looks over onto our five acres of property down below. I live in the Pacific Northwest, so it's a pretty scenic view. I was really confused, and thought maybe it was a worker that my mum had hired for our renovations on the house, who was admiring the view. I'm a little bit uncomfortable at this point, because the dude walks to the side of my house out of sight. I head upstairs to see him now roaming around my front yard and my driveway, looking at things, checking out my house, and he still hasn't seen me at this point. I call my dad and ask him if we have hired anyone to come by the house, and he says not that he knows of, and tells me he's going to call my mum and ask her, and then call me back. I'm waiting for the call, when I notice this strange dude's car. It's a white Honda with no license plates, just parked parallel to my front door. The dude still hasn't seen me, and he's still wandering around, so I take this as an opportunity to remember that we have a security system and I armed it. So if he did try to break in, it would immediately alert the police. If this was some sort of professional or worker, he would have rung my doorbell or knocked at least once. He did neither. Just then I get a call back from my dad, saying neither him or my mum hired anyone to come by today, and that I need to call our local police station immediately. I went back downstairs after making sure to lock every door and window upstairs, and called my city's police station. I explained to a woman on the other end what is happening, and she decides that she's not going to send an officer out, and instead gives me a number to call their emergency dispatch line, and told me to talk to them. I call the number she gives me, 
and immediately I get an automated message saying, Thank you for calling the non-emergency hotline. Nobody is available today to take your call. If this is an emergency, please hang up and dial 911. At this point, I'm really irritated because 15 minutes had passed and this weird dude is still lurking around my house while I'm home alone and apparently that wasn't enough to warrant an emergency to the lady I called. I hung up and decided to call 911. After getting in touch with the 911 operator, I was asked a series of questions about his appearance before they would even alert officers near me to start heading towards my house. The whole thing really seemed weird. Nobody was in a hurry to have officers come up to my place when I was a young girl home alone with a strange dude. I asked the officer if I should stay on the line with her when she finally, after what seemed like forever, alerted the police to come to where I was. And she agreed, and I went back upstairs to check on the weird guy. And he's now sitting in his unplated Honda, either listening to the radio show extremely loud, or on a phone call with someone through his car. It was a very prominent loud male voice coming from his car. Then all of a sudden, I heard the tone you hear when someone hangs up on you, and the operator was no longer on the line. I was really confused when my thoughts were interrupted by an unrecognized phone number calling me. I assumed it was the operator calling me back, so I picked up. Instead, I was greeted by really creepy heavy breathing. I'm not sure who, but it really freaked me out. I hung up immediately, dialed back 911. I had been pretty calm up until this point, but that phone call put me in panic mode. I got on the phone with another operator who already knew my situation and address before I could even explain it. She said the cops were on their way. 20 minutes had passed at this point. The dude is still here in his car and the cops are not. Keep in mind I live in a smaller town, so there's no reason why it took the cops as long as it did. Finally, this dude is leaving my driveway right as the cops pull up. They ask him a few questions. The cop then comes to my door and hands me a sketchy looking flyer saying, it was just a landscaper. He said he had an appointment. I was really relieved and irritated that it was just a dude my mum had hired. I called my mum back and said the cop said it was just a landscaper that you hired and that he had an appointment. She goes, I can assure you, we never hired a landscaper. We don't even need one. So creepy dude, who was posing to try and rob our house, let's not meet again. A few important things before I tell my story. Number one, my kitchen has a big window next to a door. At the right side through the window, you can look at our backyard. It doesn't have a curtain. I always sit at our dinner table to work on school things and stuff which is placed in front of a large window. Two, we have two Shih Tzu slash Maltza mix dogs. They're very sweet, but they bark a lot when they hear something outside. Three, when this happened, I was home alone with my little brother of 13 and four, my neighbors have a cat that walks around our house a lot. With that said, this is the story. A few months ago, my parents decided to go on a little holiday together for two days. My brother and I were fine with being home alone, and we didn't really want our grandparents to babysit us. My parents agreed, and they left that Saturday morning. The whole day was just normal. Everything went like it usually does. When it was about 11.30 p.m., my brother and I went upstairs to sleep. I put out the lights and locked the windows and doors, and everything seemed normal. Around 2 a.m., I woke up to the sound of my dogs barking loudly. They do this pretty often because of the neighbor's cat walking around our house. I thought nothing of it and went back to sleep. 
Usually, though, the dogs will cease their barking after five minutes, but they did not. I thought this was really weird, so I got out of bed and checked on my brother. He was still asleep. I chose not to wake him up and walk downstairs alone. I went down. My dogs were barking towards the large kitchen window, which wasn't that weird since the cats walked in our garden a lot too. I put a light on and walked around the kitchen to see if something was off. Everything seemed fine. I then checked if maybe my dogs were in pain or something and they weren't. I then looked outside to see if the cat was walking around, but it was nowhere to be seen. This made me feel very uneasy. After this, I didn't feel like sleeping anymore. So I sat down at the dinner table to watch some YouTube and chill out for a bit. After about 10 minutes, I started to feel uneasy again. I had this weird feeling of being watched from the window. I thought it would be better to shut the lights off and go back upstairs because I wasn't feeling safe. I grabbed a kitchen knife to protect myself if anything were about to happen. When I got upstairs, I checked on my brother again. He was still sleeping, and I sat in our hallway so I could hear things downstairs better. After a while, my dogs began barking again. At this point, I was so scared that I was nearly in tears. I knew I had to call the police and then walk downstairs. The police told me they would be there in 15 minutes. I went downstairs as silently as I could. When I reached our hallway downstairs, I noticed that the lights by our front door were on. This only happens when people walk by as their sensor lights. But I stupidly shrugged it off as being our neighbor's cat. When I got back into the kitchen, my dogs were still barking. I turned on the lights and sat down. And not a minute later, did I notice movement behind the large window in our garden. I just froze. I couldn't move. My dog started barking like crazy because they could see the movement too. A pretty large person was moving slowly towards the door. I still had the knife, but I was 15 and petite. The person looked a lot larger than me and I surely couldn't win against him. He had to have seen me because he started moving faster towards the door. Fortunately, at this point, the police arrived. They knocked at the front door. I sprinted towards the door to let them in and the man probably run away because when the police investigated the backyard, he was gone. Later, with the help of a police dog, the man was arrested and charged for attempted burglary. He apparently was arrested a few years ago because of attempted assault. My brother and I didn't get hurt and everything turned out fine, but I'm still too scared to stay home alone. To the crazy man who tried to break into our house, let's not meet. Never in my then short life had I ever really considered the concept of actual fear. I loved horror movies. My father was constantly renting them for me, despite my mother's protest. I loved that sort of fear. The tingling in your stomach when the music starts to get tense and the character in the movie does not see something behind them and you're anxiously awaiting the climax of the sudden jump. That is a fun fear. What I felt that autumn night when I was eight years old was much, much different. I grew up in north of Toronto, in a really beautiful town. We had a gorgeous, big, two-story house that even now, 17 years later, I still consider home in a strange way. It certainly was not a small town by any means. It wasn't quaint and wasn't the sort of place that everyone knew each other and where no one locked their doors. In general, though, it was safe. There was the occasional stranger danger stories that would circulate about kids seeing someone in the forest or ravines or areas surrounding the town. Being a family of all girls, we were taught the basics, always lock the doors, never talk to strangers, 
and never accept rides. It was the beginning of fall, where the maple tree leaves started to turn amazing reds and oranges, and it would get dark much earlier. It was around eight, and the sun had already fully set. My parents and older sister were all out, leaving my middle sister Kay and I home alone. Kay decides she wants to have a friend over, and wants us to walk and meet her halfway. It was realistically only about a five minute walk to get there, although at the time, it seemed like a huge adventure. Kay could not find her house. We searched for a while, with no luck. While she continued searching, I remembered my parents kept a hidden key in the garage for emergencies. In this particular house, there was no direct door connecting the garage to the house. You had to open the actual garage door to get it. Or there was a side regular door. Since I had no key, I opened the garage door. I remember very clearly finding the key. And as I got back to the keypad to close it, I saw headlights. I anticipated seeing a familiar vehicle, seeing my parents or my sister arriving home. But that was not what I was met with. Pulled halfway up my drive about 10 feet from where I was standing was a beige Montana minivan. I heard the slight sound of a window rolling down, a car door opening and my eyes finally focused on the figure of a man, one arm fully out of the window, along with his torso and head. He held the door ajar too, easy access to jumping out if he decided to. He was a big man, completely bald, shaved down to the skin, shiny sort of head bald, and he had a thick soul patch on his chin. It was probably only a few seconds, but it felt like an eternity until he finally spoke. I remember there was a lightness to his voice. I think at the time, it probably took a friendly tone. But as an adult now, I wonder if it wasn't a more sickening excitement he may have felt at the opportunity he saw. Are you home alone? This is the fear I was talking about. A muscle stiffening, stomach churning fear. This is the sort of fear you see in horror movies, where the person is too afraid to move. That physically freezing fear is what I felt. I was eight years old and tiny. I had no chance. The garage was empty. The driveway was empty. No cars, no signs of adults, no hope. I felt like I was outside my body watching this happen to another little girl. It wasn't happening to me. I couldn't be taken or hurt. That sort of stuff doesn't actually happen. I heard this weird echoing noise coming from somewhere, my body still frozen. It wasn't until he was hurling himself back into his vehicle and squealing his tires as he violently reversed off my driveway that I realized my sister had opened the front door. I assume he didn't want to take a chance of who could have been opening the door, so he took off. My parents eventually came home, and the police came and we filled out her report. Nothing came of it. No man was ever found, and the stories raged in our neighborhood of the occasional creepy encounters that other kids had. I have no idea what may have happened had my sister not come to the door at that moment. I try not to imagine what a grown man in a minivan could have done with a tiny eight-year-old girl. I know some people hate these whole let's not meet endings, but hey, when in Rome, I hope to never ever meet the man I saw that night again. I hope to God, no other little girl does either. Just a few days ago, I was home, minding my own business, studying for an exam. I was kind of stressed out and couldn't really focus on anything. It was midday. The doorbell rang, so I got up and opened the door. There was a man, mid thirties, average build, who looked like a construction worker. He asked me if my parents were home 
because he needs 50 bucks to fix a pipe. I told him no, they're not, and he asked me when they were coming. I told him I lived with my boyfriend, and I asked why does he need money, since we just paid 35 bucks to the building administration. He said those are for other things, and that this is an emergency. That my neighbors had called him because on our side of the building, the eaves were broken and the water was dripping on the windows. He then asked me to talk to my boyfriend about the money, and I told him to come back later because he wasn't home. He told me to ask him when he was coming back, because the problem needs urgent care. I closed the door, grabbed my phone, and asked him. Red flag. Is it a pipe or the eaves that are broken? I wanted to ask him which neighbors had called him, if he could give me a receipt, and exactly how much this was going to cost. But at this point I had gotten a little scared. I'm a hundred pound girly. I actually look like a kid, which is why he asked for my parents, even though I'm 22. The way he talked was also weird. I don't know how to describe it. It just had a mean slash crazy vibe to it. So, you know, he could have knocked me over with the door. I also felt incredibly stupid to have told him I was home alone, but he kept asking to talk to the other people. It was my first instinct. Anyway, my boyfriend said he would come home in an hour. I didn't tell him the whole story because the guy was waiting outside. I opened the door again, and I decided I would rather talk to him than make him angry by not opening the door. The door to our apartment is an old wooden door. We live in a cheap rented apartment, so I didn't feel protected enough by it. There I am. I open the door and tell him it's going to be an hour till he comes back and that I'm very sorry for the inconvenience. He says it's all right and that he'll come back later. Except he didn't leave immediately. He asked me about our rent, if we worked, if we were students, to which I barely replied. I work, we're both students. I can't give you any more details. I can't tell you the amount of money I pay for my rent. He then proceeded to ask me if I knew other girls such as myself who were cute and looking for a partner, someone 25 to 30 years old, that he's a good guy, a city guy, and it's really hard to find a good girl. He probably took about five minutes to explain this and grill me for telephone numbers of girls who would not hang up on him. I tried to be as nice as possible and explained to him I only had friends my age and that they were all in relationships as far as I knew. He asked me a couple of more times, but I kept telling him the same thing. So he gave up. He asked me if my boyfriend and I had been together for long, to which I replied that we'd been together for two years. He wished us good luck and something that would translate to may you have a future long marriage. He asked me in which apartment the administrator lived. And when I told him, he finally left. I told my boyfriend everything and he came home as swiftly as he was able. By this point, I felt like puking. I was so scared. I had given away too much info while trying to keep him calm. He immediately said it was a scam and went downstairs to talk to the administrator. She told him he had knocked on her door and asked her for $15 and that the girl on the third floor, me, had sent him. She also told him she knew he was a scammer and not to worry, just to be careful. I am scared. It seems like he's planning a robbery, like he's gotten into the building as someone must have opened the door for him. He's inspected the doors and chose ours because, well, it's not the best door. He asked for money to see if we had it on hand. He asked for the price of rent to see if we have money and if the stuff in the apartment is of value. Maybe we've been tagged. Or maybe asking for money really was the whole plan and for someone to fall for it. But why choose me or my apartment when there are about 14 others? Weirdly enough, I feel like, like he was nice to me. He was calm and didn't try to convince me to give him the money. 
He tried to get my parents and then my boyfriend to be his target. He took pity on me. Nevertheless, we've been sleeping with all our interior doors open to hear if someone tries to break into our apartment and we try not to leave it empty for long periods of time. Living in constant fear, living the dream. I live out in the middle of nowhere with my mum and two sisters. We had all gotten into a massive fight over pizza of all things, and my mum and two sisters stormed off and left me home alone. I was very angry. I'm not going to go into the details of the argument, as thinking back on it, I was wrong and it was pathetic, which as a moody teenager is something quite hard to admit in the heat of the moment. Nonetheless, I wasn't in a good mood and I was sitting there in the dark in my room, sulking in my fury. After about an hour, I had got bored of doing nothing, so I began playing some video games on my phone. My family hadn't come back yet, and I speculated, given the length of time they'd been, that they had probably gone to visit our grandparents. That's what they usually did on a Friday night anyway. I sat there, entertaining myself, when all of a sudden I started hearing something. It was coming from the background. It was like people were approaching the house, a continual buzz of noise and talking. I poked my head past the curtain and looked out the window to see a bunch of people walking towards our house from the woods. They were all wearing black robes. The thing is, I thought it would be scarier, but because of the laughter and the continual talk, I wondered who they were, and why they were dressed so oddly. They didn't feel remotely threatening. I watched tentatively from my dark room, and they all seemed to stop at the house. That's when I realised they weren't here to carry on walking. They'd come with a purpose, and outside my house they'd stopped, and were starting to inspect it. I assumed, in the heat of the moment, that they were there to practice some kind of ritual, maybe some kind of cult, and that I was their chosen victim. I tried telling myself it was bullshit, and thought that I should call my mum, but I was still pissed, so I decided against it, thinking I could brave on the cult alone. The fury was still pumping through my veins, and I was angry. So I rushed downstairs as I heard people fiddling with the locks. I went and grabbed all the kitchen knives I could and held them out like Freddy Krueger style. I opened the back porch door, taking the people who were fiddling there completely by surprise and yelled out incredibly loudly whilst holding knife in hand. I wasn't sure what was gonna happen. Perhaps I was just feeling ballsy because of my fury, but my screams echoed through the night, and the person just stared at me and went, sorry, wrong house, and the group quickly dispersed and ran back into the woods. I couldn't believe my luck. I had single-handedly chased off the cult, and after a few hours, when my family got back and the adrenaline had worn off, I apologised reluctantly, and then told them about my encounter. Of course, none of them believed me, and it was quickly dismissed and forgotten about. But about three years later in the local news, reports that a group of hooded individuals were going to people's houses, causing harm and stealing stuff. There was even a case where they found a guy dead, stabbed in the woods. I wonder, if I hadn't have taken them by surprise, would I still be alive today? Would my fury have cost me my life? Could they have come into the house and ended me? Some things are best not dwelling on. So, I grew up in Las Vegas. 
I'd moved there when I was in second grade. I was around seven or so. My mother was working at some sort of motorcycle repair shop in Arizona. That just wasn't paying the bills all that well. So she jumped at the offer of a new job. Fast forward about five years. I'm in middle school now. My brother and I were almost exactly two years apart. I was about to turn 12, so he was 10 at the time. My mother being quite low on the seniority list was forced to work late nights. That left me and my brother home alone after school more often than not. Our nights were usually pretty uneventful, usually consisting of us avoiding whatever homework was assigned warming up leftovers in the microwave, and watching whatever sparked our interest on the TV, which was usually either WWE wrestling or some kind of cartoon. We usually ended up in bed before our mum got home, but occasionally, we'd wait up for her. One night, or I suppose one afternoon, considering it was still broad daylight, everything was pretty normal. My brother sat on the living room floor, engulfed in whatever was going on on the TV. And I was using my mum's desktop computer feeding my virtual pets. Then there was a rather aggressive knock at the door, which was very odd. I was sort of an outcast child. I didn't really have too many friends, nor did my brother. Even then, we lived in what you would consider a senior living community. My mother was the youngest adult there, and was around her mid-thirties. My brother, being too short to reach the peephole, doesn't move, and only slightly reacts and looks at me. I get up from the computer chair and make my way to the front door to glance out the peephole. I see a man in a black ski mask staring back at me through the peephole. It definitely didn't seem real. It sort of seemed like something from a cliche movie, as if he were dressed to rob a bank. I was immediately scared shitless, and I obviously didn't bother asking who it was. I silently stepped away, shut off the TV, grabbed my brother and our small black pomenarian, and ran back towards my bedroom. Once we were safely hidden in my closet, I informed him of what was outside, he didn't say much, but was visibly shaken up. Just quietly stood there holding our dog. I slid the tiny flip phone alarm left us for emergencies from my pocket and dialed 911. I whispered to the operator the entirety of the call, as I didn't think the man had left, considering the knocks persisted after we left the living room. Yet somehow, she understood me and sent an officer over. Immediately after the call ended with the operator, I dialed for my mother. I explained everything to her, and she ended up leaving work early, and came home around the same time the police did. I'm not sure what deterred him from pursuing further, but of course the man had gone by the time they both arrived. The officer was very clearly not taking any of it seriously, most likely thinking that these two young boys were just paranoid from staying home alone was probably some young man playing a joke on some of his friends. However, like I stated previously, we lived in a senior living community. Who could possibly be playing a joke on us? His dear grandmother? He then gave my brother and I stickers, as if that would console our nerves after seeing some masked man pounding on the door. Fortunately, I never saw the stranger after that. After that experience, my house, however, was broken into, as well as my car three times, but thankfully none of us were present when all of this took place. Since then, my family and I have moved out of state and have installed a security system. I live in the suburban part of a small rural town in eastern Missouri, in a pretty quiet neighborhood. We've had one crime here in the past three years and it was me who committed it. I'm a jaywalker. Comprised mostly of elderly women and single mothers. We own four vehicles, 
My car, my mum's van, my stepdad's car, and my mum's old truck that's illegal to drive. I was home alone about a week after graduation, while my stepdad was at work. My mum was taking my youngest brother to the doctor's office, and my two middle brothers were at their friend's house, so I was lounging on the couch in my fuzzy robe and underwear playing Fallout. My stepdad is a professional chef, and he does 80% of the cooking at home. I have terrible anxiety, and an addiction to investigation discovery. So whenever I come home alone, I keep his longest, sharpest knife, either on my person or within arm's reach, at all times. It may have saved my life or something. A knock on the door isn't too suspicious. We frequently get solicitors and Mormons in the neighbourhood, so I wasn't too worried. Being a cautious person, I peeked out through the curtains just a bit to see who it was. I'd seen the guy around the neighbourhood before, walking, and I didn't feel threatened by him, since if it got physical, I at least had five inches on him, and a knife. I went to open the door, figuring that at worst I could politely turn him away, tell him I wasn't interested and go on with my life. At best, well, he was cute in a generic way. So I opened the door, resting my hand on the back of the couch, where I've hidden the knife under a blanket, just in case. As soon as I open the door, I know something's off. I've got a blunted effect due to a combination of depression, PTSD from abuse, and a schizotypical personality disorder. So I've grown used to faking facial expressions to fit in. I thought maybe this dude had similar issues, because his face was not normal. He had a big friendly smile, right below a pair of absolutely dead eyes. Hey, beautiful day out. Mind if I come in for a moment? I kinda smiled back at him. Uh, no, mum doesn't like me letting strangers in. Oh. His smile got bigger. Okay. How are you doing? At this point, I was starting to feel nervous. I shrugged. Can't complain, I guess. Are you here to sell me something or tell me about God? He shrugged back. Oh, you know. Can I come in? Maybe talk to your mum? Uh, I'll go get her. She's in the backyard. I moved to close the door and step back, not turning my back to the dude. Before I closed the door, he reached out and stopped the door. His fake smile was gone. His face was dead. You're home alone. Your mum isn't in the backyard. I paused and swallowed hard. Then I pushed the door open again. What do you want, man? To come inside. Please let me in. I reached over. Quickly slid the knife out from under the blanket and pointed it at him. I'm not letting you in. Please just leave. He looked at the knife, back up at me, and blinked rapidly. Then he affixed the smile to his face. Oh, no problem. Bye. I watched him turn around and walk back down the street, until he turned the corner. Then I locked and bolted every door and window in the house, got the dog out of my mum's bedroom, and resumed my gaming. I then called my aunt's boyfriend the only cop I trust, let him know what happened and stayed on the phone with him until my mum got home from the doctor's office. She called around town and found out a couple of other people had seen him walking and driving around, but no one knew who he was, and we were all on high alert for about a week. It's been about a month now, and no one in town has seen him since. He's just disappeared. This happened a few months ago in the dead cold winter. I remember being home alone. My parents had gone out to the bar for their friend's birthday, and my little sister was at my cousin's house for a sleepover. My dog and I were the only two in the house, which is sometimes a bit scary for me, because it's late at night. I don't really like being by myself, mostly because I would have no way to defend myself if something happened. 
I'm a 15 year old, 5 foot 1 girl, and I can't cause much damage. I'm also a very overly paranoid person, which sucks with these situations. It was probably around 11pm. I got up from watching something on my laptop to get snacks and feed my dog. When I came into the kitchen, my dog was staring at my back door and growling. Our back door is glass, so when I looked outside, all I saw was black. Do you want to go outside? I asked my dog. But she just continued to stare and growl at the door. I shrugged it off as her being in a defensive mood for no reason. Or she saw an animal. She's a little dog, but she thinks she's tough. I grabbed a snack out of the pantry and went over to my dog by the door. I picked her up and take her into my room when our motion activated light turns on. I looked up expecting to see an animal scurrying away, but oh no, I saw the figure of a man. He was wearing a black hoodie and I could barely make out his face. I knew he was staring at me. I stared at him and he ran off, hopping over my back fence and into my neighbor's yard, leaving tons of footprints in the snow. This freaked me out. I began to cry, and I called my mother who was slightly drunk and told her what I saw. She began to freak out over the phone, and I heard her talking to my dad. They both told me they'd be back, but to call the police in the meantime. I hung up, dialed 911, and explained what happened to the dispatcher. She calmed me down as I was having a pretty bad anxiety attack, telling me that it would all be okay and the police would be there as soon as possible. I heard banging on the door after what felt like hours. Even though it was probably only 10 minutes, the police began talking to me. I was a tiny bit calmer than I was before. They explained to me that they would inspect the backyard and wait for my parents to get home. My parents finally got home. They weren't too far, which was good, and the police told them a patrol car would be staying around here. They explained to my parents that a house about a mile up had recently been robbed while the owners were gone. The footprints they found in the snow matched the ones that were at the other house. This freaked my parents and I out of course, but the police assured us that they would be on the lookout around this area. I never found out what happened to the man, but I hope that he got caught. Let me set the scene. I live in the outskirts of a town at the end of a terraced house, and there are lots of houses in my area, in front and behind. I was home alone with three dogs. My boyfriend was over at his friend's, which was a three minute walk away. And this time, we didn't really lock the front door, if one of us was in the house, but now I do. Nothing really happened where we lived. We had three decently sized dogs, and were a bit naive. And to be fair, I had recently moved in here with my boyfriend, and before I lived in a small village where everyone knew everyone, and you could actually leave your door unlocked. So I was sat in my pyjamas, watching TV, with all the dogs next to me when the door knocks. It was around 10pm, and I was in my PJs so was a bit annoyed. I got the dogs off me, and walk out of my living room and pull the living room door closed, closing the dogs in. Bear in mind it took all of 10 seconds to do this, and as I approach, the door swings open, and this man that I have never seen storms into my house and gets right into my face. There's also another man and a woman right behind him who don't enter. I was frozen in shock. Who the hell do you think you are? You think you can just run around here doing what you want? What? Don't give me that. Do you think I'm a Muppet? I saw you and all your little friends running back into this house. Uh, I'm literally standing here in my PJs and haven't been outside. Okay. Do you think I was born yesterday? Well, you just walked into someone's house that you've never met and screamed at her, so maybe. Maybe it wasn't her, man. Maybe. At this point, my dog started barking behind the door. 
The man stares at me for what seems like forever, but was more probable just a few seconds, and then walks out and slams the door shut. I was standing there shaking for a few seconds before I started to just get mad, when I realised what had happened. I lock the door and ring my boyfriend straight away, who gets home in about one minute flat, but the group was nowhere to be seen. I didn't want to call the police, because I couldn't really give my boyfriend a good description when he was asking. In the seven years since, I have not bumped into these people again. Thank God. I now always lock the door, and thankfully, as we've had two other occasions where people have come late at night, but those are other stories. However, if it did happen again, I would like to think I would handle myself better now. This happened very recently. So we've been only living here for a few months, and my window is the only window out of the entire house that has a view of the backyard, and it's also right next to our very squeaky back door, meaning I always hear when someone comes in and out. So my family went out to run errands last night, leaving me home alone trying to catch up on my classes, because you know, college life. Well, it was going good for the first hour, until I hear the back gate open and shut, and at first I thought, Oh, they must be back, thinking of my family, but that thought was immediately gone when I remembered we have a front door, and there's no reason for them to come in through the back. So I sit as still as I possibly can and listen. I start to hear the sound of crunching leaves, like someone is stepping on them, but I can also hear they are trying to move slowly. At this point, they are right under my window, and I know this because we have a couch located right underneath it, and I hear someone actually sit on it, and let out a grunt, which also lets me find out it's a man who's doing this, and I'm feeling extremely grateful over my paranoia of having my blinds open. It's at this point that I'm completely freaking out, not being able to move at all because there is literally someone sitting under my window, and I sit there motionless for two minutes, until I start hearing a tapping on the window. They started out light. With each set of taps he added more weight to them, and I can feel my eyes grow even wider, and immediately feel like I'm going to pass out, but I still can't move. It's like I'm paralysed with fear, and it still keeps on going the constant tapping. Until I finally snap out of it, and immediately, without shoes, and I'm just in shorts and a tank top, do I jump up, grab my keys and run up the front door, into 30 degree weather at night, which in my defence was definitely not the smartest thing to do, as who knows if he was alone. Someone could have easily just been at the front door the moment I got out, but I didn't care, and I didn't even feel cold, I just needed to leave. I hopped into my car, and drove off, and parked at a Walmart nearby and sat there in shock, not even believing that that had actually happened. I finally picked up my phone, and see my hands are shaking visibly, but I managed to call my parents, and as soon as I heard my dad's voice I burst into tears. I wasn't even able to tell him anything, and it wasn't until about five minutes later that they show up in the parking lot, and I calmed down enough to tell them what happened. Then, we went back home. I was terrified to go back, and even waited in the car until my dad came back from the backyard after inspecting it, and said that whoever there was gone. We also debated about calling the police, but I honestly don't think anything would have been done. Just file a report since I didn't even see his face, and he was probably long gone by now. But I'm really regretting it, because I'm still terrified and don't even feel safe in my own home. I've been trying to distract myself all day now, but I'm so shaken up, I'm just hoping I can forget about this whole ordeal. This took place when I was 12. I live in a suburban neighbourhood. Our house is beside railway tracks. Because of this, teenagers will walk along the tracks at night and climb over the railings into our backyard. 
Most of the time they're only playing around or exploring, so there isn't much trouble with them. But sometimes more malicious people will come off the tracks. I was home alone when this took place. It was around 20 past 1, and it was very dark outside. I was watching TV in my room, and I heard my house phone ring, but I let it go to voicemail because I wasn't bothered to answer it. Two minutes later, the phone rang again. This time I went to answer it in case it was urgent, despite the fact it was 1am. When I picked up the phone, I said hello, and received no reply. I said hello again, but got no answer. So I hung up. It was probably a butt dial. When I went back, I settled into my room watching TV, and I heard a rattling sound from outside. I heard it again, so I looked out my window thinking it was probably just teenagers trying to jump over the chain link fence. Except there wasn't a group of teenagers. It was just a guy trying to get over the fence. He had a torch in his mouth, and I knew this was shady, but I didn't know what to do. I didn't call the police, I just watched him. I don't know what I was thinking. The man finally got over the fence. I couldn't see his face, but he was pointing his flashlight at various things in my yard. Everything valuable, such as bikes, were kept away in a locked shed. So I knew he would just get bored and walk away. But he didn't. He hung around in the garden for a few minutes, and then went towards my kitchen door. From my bedroom, I could hear the handle on the back door being messed around with. My heart sunk, as I remembered that I'd left my phone in the kitchen when I was getting food earlier that night. And the only other phone was the house phone, that was downstairs in the hallway. So I couldn't call the police. I then heard him bang his fist on the door, but after a minute, he stopped. I looked out of my bedroom window and watched him jump back over the fence and switch off his flashlight. I watched my yard for a few minutes to make sure he was gone. Since then, I make sure I have my phone with me everywhere I go. I hate to think what would have happened had he got in. In 2014, I was home alone. My then boyfriend, now husband, was at work, as I happened to have a very rare day off. I was watching The Golden Girls, as I snuggled our two cats and relaxed. I remember feeling a strange, dreadful feeling. I sat up from the couch and noticed a man with shaggy and greasy long hair. He seemed to make eye contact, even though he was roughly two blocks away. Then he suddenly broke out in a sprint. I felt this moment in every inch of my body. I rushed into the front porch and locked the screen door before rushing back into the house and locking the main door leading into the house. He was suddenly at the side of our house, punching and kicking the side window of our home as he screamed inaudible screams. Either that, or he was opening his mouth and not making sounds. I don't know which is more terrifying. I was shocked as I stared at him. Suddenly, he lunged off to the side and I realised that the side door might have also been unlocked. I ran to our side door and caught it right as I saw his face appear in the tiny door window. I began to cry and locked it before running into our spare bedroom, whipped out my cell phone and dialed 911 as I cried and tried to explain the issue. For some reason, the story in my memory skips to my upstairs neighbour calling me about five minutes later, asking if I'm okay, and me saying, do you think I'm okay? He begins telling me what happened after I hid. Apparently the man had run up to his apartment and knocked calmly, so he answered. He had no way of knowing that the person at his door was not of sound mind, and I had not thought to warn him. He opened the door, leaving only a thin screen between him and this man. He asked the man if everything was okay, to which the man began screaming, They're trying to kill me. Help. He was shocked and backed up, saying, Please step back, I will call the police. By then, 
he was downstairs, dialing already. The man punched his door and ran downstairs, kicking and punching his car in the driveway as he screamed about being chased and on the verge of being murdered. He pulled at the car doors and punched at the windows as he screamed, and I begged for the police to arrive faster. The police showed up as the man was still fighting with the neighbor's car. They had brought along an ambulance and took the man away, strapped him in a stretcher in the back, and we never looked back. This happened two nights ago. Around 8 p.m., my boyfriend working night shift and the maintenance men finally got my new fridge in my new kitchen of our apartment. I had put all my food in the sink, but I had no ice to keep the food cool, so I called my sister. I was home alone and I heard a knock at the door. While telling my sister to get ice, I opened the door, thinking it was one of the maintenance men. Maybe they'd left something behind that I hadn't seen yet. Nope. It was a drunk old man with a big jacket on, and it was way too hot for a big puffer jacket. Now I'm a 92 pound, 5 foot 2 woman, and I am by myself, and don't have a job, as I'm an artist who sells her work. And this situation has never happened before. Can I use your bathroom? I don't want to piss outside. He asks while stepping closer. I say, I'm sorry, my boyfriend's in there taking a shower, and try my best to shut the door ever so slowly. He quickly grabs the door and puts his foot between the door and the wall. I freak out, push the door with all my might, and run for my metal bat in my room. By the time I got there and was ready to hit this guy, my sister was there with her friend with the ice. I dropped to my knees and cried. She said that when they got to the steps, he was running away. I didn't call the police, but if I see him again, I will. I should have been more careful. I told my boyfriend and he said, if no one has lived here for years and we live on the second floor, why would he come to our door? That freaked me out so badly. This happened to me last Thursday and I can't stop thinking about it. I'm a 30-year-old female who lives with my fiancé and our two dogs. I have two huskies, one is two and one is only four months. My huskies are not guard dogs, to save their lives. They don't bark nor howl. These dogs just love people too much. My brother-in-law and friends have walked in on multiple occasions and the dogs don't make a peep. So anyway, it's 8 p.m. It's dark out, and I'm home alone. My fiancé had a hockey game, and I'm in the bathroom with the door closed and the blow dryer going, so I can't really hear anything going on around me. That is, until I hear one of the dogs howl. I stop the blow dryer and listen, thinking that the dogs are fighting again. Then I hear a faint knock, and the dogs start going apeshit. Barking, howling, jumping into the bay windows, so badly that I thought they'd break it. I think, what the hell is making them go crazy like that? Maybe it's another dog or skunk. I look out my bedroom window, as it was the closest view to the front door for me. Well, lo and behold, there are two men in black hoodies, standing there in the front. They start knocking loudly, and this time my two-year-old husky jumps from the bay window to the front door and starts growling and ramming his body into the door. I'm watching this from my bedroom as the dog jumps into the door. One of the men jumps back startled, looks at the other guy, and they just walk away. I called my fiancé to get home ASAP. I watched them walk away down the road. They weren't selling anything, and they didn't stop in any of the houses. I was so creeped out. Thank goodness for my crazy dogs. My mother's best friend in another state surprised her by saying she would personally pay for a plane ticket to come out and see her as a special birthday treat. After getting an okay from the doctor, saying that she was good enough to travel, my mum packed her bags. When you're in your late 50s and never see your friends, 
you jump at the chance to see them. So for two weeks, my mum was going to be in another state, visiting a friend, allowing me to have the house to myself for the entire time. Unlike some girls, I did not throw parties or have friends over. Really, I just went to work, came home after, and relaxed. I had been staying by myself for years. When I did live on a college campus, my roommate almost never slept in our room. And before that, as a teenager, I was often home alone overnight for many reasons. Also, I am no delicate wallflower. I'm not so petite, but I'm not overweight. Honestly, I'm an average build, but I could probably knock down someone if I needed to. So after my mum had left for the two weeks, life went on as normal. For three days, I continued as normal. But by the end of the first week alone, I had really only left my house to go to work or to go to the grocery store. But at the beginning of the second week is when I felt uneasy. I'm not easily frightened, so this unease was foreign to me. While I had not invited people over, I did go to a friend's house. She and I just wanted to hang out, binge on junk food and watch horror movies, and gossip about lame bullshit as we were still teenagers. I went home around midnight, so it was very dark when I pulled into my driveway. I should mention that my house is practically in the middle of nowhere, and my nearest neighbour is at least a mile away. And to make matters worse, we have an outdoor light that automatically kicks on when it's dark outside. Like a city street light, actually. Well, ever since Mum went on her trip, the light began to flicker. And when I'd look outside in the night, I would sometimes see pitch black. Anyway, midnight, and it was my dumbass that ignored the light outside being very flickery. It was practically off only giving me faint glimmers of light to show me the door. I just used the flashlight on my phone, turning off the flashlight when I was on my porch, so I stood in darkness. No porch light or anything were on. When I stepped onto my porch to unlock the door, I heard the cat meowing. Mum and I are allergic to cats, so we can't keep one inside of the house. Why we don't just bite the bullet and take an allergy pill? I don't know, but the cat was perched in the porch swing as usual, as I could tell by her meow's direction. She also hissed at me, or something in the dark. Damn polite, why didn't it work? I passed my cat's hissing off as her being a drama queen, and head inside. Now this is where I stop stalling and say what happened. By coincidence, one of the movies my friends and I were watching was called Psycho. You know, crazy dude with a mummy complex in a motel killing people with the infamous shower scene. And who can forget Norman Bates' stare at the end of the film? His eyes. His evil eyes. Just after walking through my front door, I felt weird. Like I had done something stupid. Chills ran down my arm and through the back of my neck without explanation. I swore that just after I closed my front door and locked it, I heard a crunch. A crunch like a person eating cereal. I shrugged it off and proceeded to get my ass into bed. And that was it. The next night I got home late again, this time from work. I had been given the task of locking up the gas station before coming home. It was around midnight again, and I came home this time to complete darkness. Only the car's headlights shined my way. Hastily, in the black of night before my lights automatically kicked off, I ran into my door and let myself in the house. There was the sound again. My cat hissed, following by crunching. Let me remind you, and think of this. It's pitch black. Outside of my field of light, I see nothing and I'm going off what I assume there is. That night, after going to bed, I wake up to the sound of something falling out on the porch. The sound was so loud it penetrated the walls of my house. I live in a one-story home, 
so the sound had not to travel far. My bedroom is in the middle of the house, like the exact centre. I was startled by the sound. It was two in the morning. At first I thought it was the cat playing outside. She's weird. Curious, I got up to investigate. There I was, wearing random clothes to sleep, my hair in a ponytail, my phone at 50% charge, at my most vulnerable in a half-asleep daze. I peer around the corner of the hallway and look out our doorway. Our front door is one of those doors with a big window on it, so you could see outside pretty darned easily. The light outside was working again, but I wish it hadn't. I reference Norman Bates as a sign of, what is the word? Irony, given I had seen Psycho recently. Now illuminated by the outdoor light, standing on my front porch, holding my cat, was a man. He was tall, skinny, surprisingly well-dressed, and holding my freaking cat in one arm. In the other, struck my curiosity more. He held a spoon. My cat looked like she wanted nothing to do with him, but he was so content holding her in one arm and a spoon in the other. I stand frozen behind the wall my eyes barely seeing him, as I swear I start to zone out. This is what fear feels like. It isn't fun. We have an automatic cat feeder on our front porch. Simple thing. You fill the back with food, and at certain times it dispenses just enough for the kitty to eat at scheduled meal times. This man had opened up the compartment of the feeder, and dipped his spoon inside like it was a bowl of cornflakes. He proceeded to eat the cat food slowly, and I could see my cat fidgeting with him. I could even hear him hissing, like she had before. Wait! More on that in a moment. He's not doing anything, mind you. Just holding my cat at 2am, eating the cat food, and not moving a single muscle. But I was frozen in fear, because a stranger doing anything on my property this late, when I or anyone is alone, is going to freak someone out. I pray to God that he would just eat his snacks and leave. But no, he closed the compartment after getting a big spoonful of cat chow and sat on the porch swing where my cat liked to sleep. He then let her go free. My cat just wandered around the porch, immediately going to the opposite side. The man just sat there. In true Norman Bates fashion, he twisted his face into a satisfactory grin, similar to Norman's face, the one he makes at the end of the film, claiming he would never hurt a fly. Yeah, if you've seen that scene, you know what I mean. Chilling. It was at this moment I sneezed. I sneezed pretty loud too. So loud that I stand there behind the corner, barely poking out my head, and the man hears me. He turns, his still grinning face to me. Oh shit, he can see me. He can see me and he knows where I'm standing right now. Not even 20 feet away. His facial expression didn't change. He just grinned and grinned and grinned and licked his lips as if he was so satisfied with his meal. Sicko freak. I immediately began to cry. I was scared of this creep and he hadn't even appeared to pose a threat. I got every bad feeling from him. I knew the door was locked when I started to pick my phone up to call the police, but he saw the phone, came up and shook his head. No. Then he spoke. Do not do that, was all he said. At that point I started sobbing, forgetting to breathe and practically dry heaving. I may have overreacted, but I was petrified. Other reactions be damned. Nobody can tell you you shouldn't feel scared when you're truly scared. The man just stood up, still grinning, waved goodbye, and walked off my porch. By sheer coincidence, the light outside flickered just as he was out of sight. After sobbing from more fright, I collected myself enough to call the police, and my mother, and my friends, my cousin, and everyone I knew right then and there. I bawled up on the floor, in tears. For all I knew, I was only helping people know I was going to die, and they should come ASAP to get the killer. 
But instead of finding me dead, the police arrived to a scared girl in her hallway, panicking, sobbing, and horrified. The police did not believe my story. They did not find him, no matter how many lights they used, or if the outside light came on for more than a few minutes. They could not find him. Just some psycho with a thing for cat food. Maybe it's funny, but to me it's not. I felt terrified from this man. I asked my friends and one of my cousins to come and stay with me the day after. Actually, the very same night. My friend who I'd visited the day prior came over. I called work and asked for the remainder of the week off. Nobody left me home alone until mum returned. Normally I care for her, but when she returned, she was taking care for me. And I cried for days. Maybe nothing really happened, but I was scared shitless. We brought the cat inside, so no more midnight snacks for the freak show. Psycho wannabe. Let's never meet again. This happened when I was nine or ten. My parents rarely left me home alone. But when they do, it's mostly because they've got adult stuff. Like going on for a relative's funeral ceremony, visiting a hospital, or something like that that they don't want to bring me to because they're scared that I will act awkwardly. And they're right. So it was the case when they let me on my own in that gloomy evening that scarred me for life. They told me that they'll be back for dinner, but in case my mum prepared some spaghetti and told me to eat it and go to bed if they weren't coming after 8.30 p.m. They had the door keys and begged me to not lock it from the inside so that they can unlock the door without my help. As soon as they left at around 6.30, I began to do my homework. To get rid of them so that I could play video games for two hours straight. I was really into my game, and I barely checked the time. But when I did, it was already 8pm. And that's when my nightmares started. So I paused the game and reheat my spaghetti in the microwave. When I heard the interphone. I live in an apartment on the fifth floor, and in order to unlock the main door on the ground floor, we had to use that interphone. You could unlock the main door with the keys, but my dad told me they'll still call me with the interphone to make sure I was sleeping or not. I answered the call, presuming it was my parents. I say hello, but no answer. Then I continue with, okay, it's unlocked now. Still no answer. It felt strange to me, because they will always say something before coming in. But I thought they were really just in a hurry to see me. How naive was I? Things got worse. After waiting for 15 minutes, I started to realize that it wasn't my parents at the interphone, because I was living on the fifth floor, and it certainly doesn't take 15 minutes to get the elevator or even to climb up the stairs. So I just unlocked some random stranger. But I felt like, no big deal, because no way in hell is that stranger gonna guess in which floor I was living. You saw that coming, huh? Well, I didn't. Someone started ringing the doorbell 20 minutes after I answered the interphone. I knew it wasn't my parents because not only was the person ringing the doorbell in the most horrendous way possible, but he was also knocking on the door. Things that my parents wouldn't do because they have the freaking key. I was sweating and I started to switch off all the lights and I took a kitchen knife with me. Even though I have no idea who this person is, as I was too scared to look into the keyhole, I knew that person wasn't welcome in my home. Then the guy says, I know there's someone here. No need to be scared. I'm the hallway cleaner. I just want some water. I'm thirsty. At that point, I was about to call my parents so they could come and beat him. But the phone was in my room. And if I move, I'll make a noise. Stupid wooden freaking creaking floors. So I stayed next to the main door in the dark, sweating, kitchen knife in hand. 
He was still trying to convince me to open the door with his same, I'm exhausted, I'm thirsty, strategy. But I knew he was lying. One, why ask for water when there's a fountain on the ground floor? And two, I was pretty sure that he was the person at the interphone. That's why he said, I know there's someone here, because I freaking answered him at the interphone. But how the hell did he find out which floor I was living on? That's still a mystery. Was he spying on me? Did he know where my parents lived? Did he kill them and take the keys? Little me was getting paranoid and tears began falling down my cheeks. But after what seemed like an eternity, he finally left his last words and they're still fresh in my memory. You're not a very polite little girl and his footsteps faded away from the door. Even if he was gone for good, I sat down next to the door and cried. I was nine to 10 at the time, and I managed to pull myself together, wipe off my tears and waited for my parents. When they arrived, I hugged them and they kind of scolded me for not being asleep yet. So I didn't tell them what happened. I was scared they'd scold me more and forbid me from going to my pajama parties. I was even more stupid at that age. The whole week after, I kept an eye on the cleaning staff in the building, and yet I've never met a male hallway cleaner. P.S. I told my family about this little incident during Christmas dinner. Didn't mention all the details, but they were very surprised that I hadn't said anything to them after all these years. We even had a nervous laughter after I said that I took the kitchen knife to defend myself. I never thought that I could laugh at that incident before. As for the mystery, it still remains a mystery. But we all discussed about this case, and the more plausible scenario is that the intruder is actually one of our neighbours, because there was no other way to find in which floor and door I was in. My parents are very friendly, so they usually talk a lot with the neighbours. I even remember that my dad used to bring me with him while visiting his neighbour's friends because they were around the same age and had the same kids to play with. So the fact that they were out that evening probably hit the ears of the neighbours. Anyway, we got a lot of fun resolving that mystery and I feel much more relieved now. The heavy dark secret that I was holding is finally gone. My girlfriend and I had been living in our new apartment approximately three to four months at the time of this story. For clarification and background, we live in a basement level unit. The one and only entrance is inside the building and down the stairs. However, there's four windows facing nothing but a row of shrubbery and tree line. It was roughly nine to 10 p.m. and she was at work for the evening. I had the place to myself, lights on and TV blasting. I was sitting in the living room, planning on eating trashy and binge watching the remaining episodes of Broad City. Not long into it, however, I heard a scraping sound from the bathroom. My first thought, a mouse, which was the last thing we needed. So I get up and make my way through the hallway as quietly as I can to catch a glimpse of it. The closer I got, the more I realized the scratching wasn't coming from the bathroom, but rather the window of the master bedroom. My next guess was it was simply kids playing outside, as they tend to, or the bunny I had seen bouncing out there that morning. Even more likely, someone taking a dog out to pee. I paused, tried to hone my hearing, and only then noticed it wasn't a sound echoing from outside, but rather scratching on the window itself. I started entering my bedroom when I noticed the sound stopped and moved to the adjacent window in the room next to it. A smaller bedroom that gave us the creeps as it is. We never used it and there was no light source. It simply sits dark and empty aside from a few boxes of my clothing. Now thinking back, it was probably a bad idea. I'm a small girl, maybe five foot two, 90 pounds and soaking wet. 
but I do have a bit of a spirit and tad bad temper. I had hoped, upon being discovered, that whoever it was, obviously to me, now that was more of a someone and not a thing, would run off. I had caught them red-handed. So I steeled myself and yelled out, I hear you. What do you want? The scratching stopped instantly. I waited. After what felt like an eternity, I assumed the coast was clear. I made my way to the windowsill and slowly cracked open the blinds. I don't know why I did. Because there he was crouched, peering into me with the widest and wildest eyes I've ever seen on a person. Most certainly strung out on something. He told me to let him in. As shocked as I was, I almost laughed at the audacity as if I was just going to swing open the window and let him waltz in. Using the remaining courage I had mustered, I tell him so not gently, get the hell away from my house. He again told me to let him in, to which I informed him that I was calling the police and hurriedly proceeded to do just that. I even turned the phone to face him for added effect, hoping this would scare or intimidating him anything to get this man to leave. Unfortunately, it had the exact opposite effect. He was seething, raging, and practically foaming at the mouth. He drew back and punched the window hard, repeatedly slamming his fists and palms against the glass. The window started cracking, blood flinging up like a gore-filmed movie effect. I was out of there fast, heart racing, slamming the door shut behind me, so tempted to run out the front door, but incredibly scared that he would just come around to the front of the building. It would take no time at all for him to do so. Torn and trapped, I picked up the nearest blunt object and placed it between myself and in between the two doors. I figured whichever one moved first, I'd go out the other. I still had the phone to my ear, urging the 911 operator to get someone here fast. In my panicked state, I also feared for my girlfriend, who would usually be coming home soon. I messaged her, warning her about what was going on. Eventually, sirens and a pounding came to the front door. The police arrived. I explained what had happened, and they searched the apartment and area near the window, coming back with a set of keys that he had possibly dropped but no sign of him, other than the broken window. They took a sample from the blood splatter that was left on the glass. My girlfriend came home after, having left work early and calling the police herself. I'm grateful she did. Maintenance had been notified and they threw up temporary boarding until it could be repaired. They never actually found the guy. Or if they did, I didn't receive any updates about it. Definitely didn't get any sleep that night, though. This summer, I went with a friend, both of us of females aged 21, to my grandparents' house in Spain. She had just finished college, so was looking for a summer job there, and I had overdue work for college, which I had to do over the summer. In the following weeks, she couldn't get a job, so she decided to go back home. But my parents were going to be flying over in two weeks' time, and my siblings and cousins would be following down a few weeks after. I decided to stay on and wait for them, and not cut my own holiday short. I was getting used to being a complete hermit as I didn't know anyone there and couldn't speak the primary language. The only human contact I had was when I went down to the local supermarket. I went down to pick up my groceries one day and after 10 days into a fortnight of loneliness, as I'm walking down an aisle, this guy walks by and says, Hola. Now, I thought he must be talking to someone else, or I misheard him, but I noticed him glancing over at me every now and then. When I had picked up all my groceries, I went to the register to pay, and who was in front of me? 
but the same man, who turned around and gestured for me to go ahead of him. I smiled, thanked him, and went ahead. Every time I glanced back at him, his eyes were focused on me, unmoving, which kept making me look awkwardly away. After finishing the transaction, I left and went to make the four minute walk back home. Feeling a bit creeped out, lo and behold, as I'm walking past the neighbor's house, this car stops besides me. The window goes down, and there's the guy again, who starts speaking to me in Spanish and gesturing for me to get into his car. As I don't speak Spanish, I assume he was offering me a lift home, and I try and communicate to him that I'm nearly done home. But he keeps going on and on in fast-paced Spanish, even though I clearly haven't got a clue what he's saying. After a few more, no gracias, no gracias, he finally drives off, and I wait to resume walking, as I don't want this random guy to know exactly which house I live in. Now I have to explain that the house I live in has a six foot wall along the whole perimeter, broken up by a front door to the front garden and a sliding door for the car to come in and out of the road. Around the house, there are about eight motion sensor lights and there were bars on all the windows and patio doors. The following night at 3 a.m., I get woken up to the motion sensor lights going off outside my front door which was the bedroom I was facing. Now, this wasn't abnormal. It could have been any number of bugs, lizards, cats, but what quickly followed was the motion sensor light outside my room going on, and I could hear footsteps. Definitely not that of an animal. I was frozen there in panic, listening for any more noises as the light turned off outside my room. I lay there, hearing only my heart drumming in my head, until the same thing happened again about a minute later, reconfirming that it actually was someone footsteps outside. After that, I lay awake for the rest of the night in total silence, not moving, but I didn't hear anyone else. Once it became light enough outside, I got out of bed and waited until it wasn't an ungodly time to call my parents back home, who in turn contacted some friends of my grandparents in Spain, and I stayed with them for the final three nights before my grandparents flew over again. I'm thankful that there were bars on nearly every opening in the house, but I don't think I'll ever be able to stay home alone there again. This happened four years ago. I had just graduated from high school and was a month and a half into summer break. Needing money for college, I began working full time for the school district I had just graduated from. Due to a music festival I wanted to attend, as well as monetary concerns, I did not go with my family to North Carolina, which was fine by me. What 18-year-old doesn't want a house to themselves for a week? Furthermore, my parents' house is out in the country, so I have little to no fear about my neighbours complaining about parties or being bothered in any way whatsoever. But I was wrong. I often take the back roads from my friend's house, but on that night, I decided I wanted some McDonald's. So I took the main drag and came home on a different route. This way takes you past the mechanic shop, and I noticed a car's lights turning on, or should I say, light, for this car, had only one headlight working. I remember thinking that it was strange that this car all of a sudden turned its lights on as I was passing, and began to become even more concerned when it pulled out behind me. But I tend to be paranoid by nature. Nothing serious, but I always question if the person behind me is following me, and whether they mean to harm me. So I brushed it off as an unfortunate coincidence. But as I neared my street, and the car was still tailing me, I started to become freaked out. 
I looked at my gas tank and my heart sunk. As I saw I was on empty. Either I pulled onto my street and go home, or I risk driving around some and seeing if this dude follows. Yet that option held the risk of my car running out of gas and leaving me stranded on the road. And I figured I'd rather take my chances on my own soil than on the side of some dark, lonely country back road. So I turned onto my street only to have my heart sink when the one headlamped car makes the turn right behind me. At this point, I know I'm screwed. With nothing left to do, I begin pulling up my driveway. It's a hill about a hundred yards long, and to my utter horror, they begin to follow me up. Looking back, I should have called the cops, but there's no lost love between law enforcement and myself, and at the time, I was too caught up to even consider calling them. If my family would have been home, this would have never happened. I would have called my dad, and he would have grabbed his gun. But he, along with the rest of my family, were gone, 12 hours away and at the beach. So when they began to drive up my driveway after me, I stopped and put my car in reverse. They responded by reversing too, and yet they stopped at the bottom, effectively blocking my driveway. At this point, I pulled forward again, only to have the same jig and dance happen. They followed, I reversed, they reversed, and sat on the end, blocking my escape. I quickly pulled up and turned my car around to come at them head on. By this time, they were halfway up my driveway, the furthest they had ever come. Looking back, I was terrified, alone, and angry. Who did this person think they were, with my brights on and shining right back into their face? I opened my car door, got out, pulled out my pocket knife, and grasped it into my left hand while I grabbed my hammer into my right. I used to keep one between my seat and door. In some weird, desperate mindset, I had made a split-second decision to grab the hammer from the hand with the handle sticking out. My hope was that it would be mistaken as a gun. I began yelling and pointing my hammer, slash gun, at the car while screaming at them to get the hell out, and what do you want? All the time I held my hammer as a gun, and prayed that they would fall for it. Whether they did or not, I cannot say. Part of me believes they thought it was a gun due to my brights being held, while making my whole front side a shadow. Yet they could have just not wanted a fight. Perhaps they thought I was a girl, or was timid, and wouldn't reset so aggressively and violently. Who knows, but it worked. They slowly backed out of my driveway and crept around the cul-de-sac. As they were leaving my street, I run after them hiding behind my neighbor's house. And at every driveway, the car would slow down to near stop, as if scoping out the houses. Thankfully, they didn't pull into any driveways and they turned off my street altogether. After I was safely in my house, I ate McDonald's by the front window with all my lights turned off, waiting to see if the creeps would come back. Thankfully, they did not. But that night, I locked every door in the house, which I have always done anyway, and slept with a hammer, machete, and baseball bat next to me, and pocket knife under the pillow. Complete overkill, I know, but I was terrified. Now I know where my dad keeps his guns, so if it ever happens again, I'll be better prepared. This happened about two months ago, when my parents went away for the weekend, leaving me and my pets to look after the house. Usually I'm very nervous to be home alone overnights, because I'm a weak, 18-year-old girl who happens to have a few enemies in town. There are teenagers who have assaulted and threatened me, and things like that. So of course, when I'm alone, I get paranoid. My parents decided to leave on Thursday night, which usually went uneventfully. So did Friday night. Finally, Saturday night rolls around, 
and I'm playing some games with my friends. It's two in the morning, and my dog is asleep behind me. All the doors are locked, lights are off, and I'm feeling good. Until I hear something outside. It starts quiet, but gradually gets louder and louder. Eventually, I realize that there's someone outside my house, yelling. Usually, I wouldn't care. It's Saturday night, and people walk down my road all the time when they're drunk. Except, perhaps, five minutes past this time, and this person has gone nowhere. I sneak up to my window, and lift the blind up just enough to peek out the window. And there he is, a fully grown man who I recognize, and later found out is someone my family know, looking directly at my window, with the most terrifying angry look on his face. He stood in the doorway, in my driveway facing the house, yelling for ten minutes. I'm a defenseless girl, and he's getting close to my house and getting increasingly more angry. I should have phoned the police, but I didn't know what to do. I rang my sister, and with my heart pounding and hands shaking, I told her what was going on. Luckily for me, she was calm about it, and asked me to shut the blind and listen to see if he would leave. I couldn't make out the words, but he kept going on for five to ten minutes, and then I couldn't hear him, but I heard something smash. I was still on the phone, and I told my sister that I swear I heard something smash, and I was scared it was a window or something. My dog is deaf, by the way, so he was unaware of this whole thing. My sister tells me to go downstairs and check, so I turn on my flashlight, on my phone, and I slowly make my way downstairs. I'm basically ready to see this dude in my house and get killed, or worse. But I check the windows, and they're all fine. The doors are all locked, and I don't see him in the peephole. My sister then tells me she can hear him around the house. She has two disabled kids, so I was literally shitting myself thinking he was going to try and break in. I asked her if I should call the police, but then she heard him leave, and we didn't hear him for all the rest of the night. I found out the next day that there was a bottle smashed outside and that's what the noise was. Even if this might have seemed like a harmless drunk, me being home alone that night makes this terrifying. And if I hadn't have closed my blinds and basically hidden until he left, I don't know what he could have been capable of. I haven't told my parents who we think he was, because he lives close, and I know for a fact my parents would kill him. Even so, whenever it's late at night, and I hear a drunk man's voice outside my house, I always fear the worst. Years ago, when I was in grade school, now I'm 22, my parents one Monday morning finally felt confident in allowing me to come home from school by myself and stay home without a babysitter until they arrived as well. That morning, my father gave me the house key, showed me the emergency numbers in the yellow book and gave me instructions on what to do if stupid things happened like the house catching on fire. After school that day, I came home, put the key in the door, and walked into my open house. I felt free, and I felt privileged that I was finally a big boy, and that I could now be home on my own. Needless to say, I kind of got caught up in the moment, and ate tons of ice cream while watching Terminator on VHS, since my parents would never let me watch anything over PG-13. Around five that day, I heard the doorbell ring. My dad told me to never answer the door by myself, even if they were home. I walked to our family room, where I could get a good view of who was there. Maybe my dad was getting a package or something. He did always enjoy ordering things online. And I saw a middle-aged man standing in a dark black jacket that I've never seen before. He rang the doorbell again and I expected him to leave after receiving no answer. After a third ring, I saw him walk down the steps and assumed he was leaving. I went back to watching Terminator when I noticed something outside my kitchen window. 
The man was walking in our backyard for some odd reason. I felt scared for my life, since some stranger was on our property. I ran under the kitchen table and grabbed the cordless phone from the counter and proceeded to call my dad's work number. He answered, and I exclaimed how some strange man was in the backyard and was now proceeding to try and open our sliding door. My dad told me to stay where I was and call the neighbours. He would call 911. I told my dad I loved him, and he said that he would call me immediately after he dialed 911. Before I could call my neighbours, the man was able to somehow open our family room window. I feared for my life, and ran to the bathroom and locked the door and called our neighbours. After about 30 seconds, I heard my neighbour running through our house, shouting my name to see if I was okay. She said how she saw no one in the house, and we stayed in the bathroom until the police arrived. The police conducted their investigation, and told us they found some fingerprints that matched a recently released criminal, who was previously put in jail for breaking into homes. After that day, my parents did not leave me without a babysitter until I went to high school. Every week, I wonder what happened. Did he run when he saw someone was in the house? Did my neighbour scare him away if he heard her yelling? Needless to say, after that day, and even after I was allowed to stay home without a babysitter, I never stayed home alone. I was either at a friend's house or an after-school programme until my parents came to pick me up. I still feel unsafe home alone. I was 17, and lived with my parents in a very remote location in a small town, in the middle of a forest. There were no neighbours, just forest. At some point in September, these flashlights start appearing, and they are pointing at our windows. Sometimes it was two, but mostly just one of them. We never bothered the police or anyone with it because we thought it was just some kids or some guy who has nothing else to do. And they never really touched anything, just flashed our windows and knocked on them. It was definitely creepy, but after a few weeks of going outside and even waiting for them to appear, they were never there. We got so used to it. They weren't like regular. Sometimes they were for a couple of days or weeks between. This encounter happened just a few days after Christmas. My parents were visiting relatives, and I was doing whatever teenage boys do when they have the house to themselves and no friends. At like 11pm, I decided to go shower. Now our shower was in a separate building, so I had to walk across the yard to get into the shower. Nothing out of the ordinary happens there, but as I'm walking across the yard, just with a towel on me, I hear a man behind me say, You know, I can catch you if you run. At that point, I wanted to cry for mother, but I kept walking like I hadn't even noticed the guy. The door was unlocked since I was too lazy to carry keys, and I just slammed the door behind me and lock it. Grab a knife from the lobby, as our house was littered with them since they are always needed and missing and go through the house checking every single possible hiding spot. Luckily, there's no one there. After that incident, there were no more flashing lights or anything creepy. I didn't call the police, but I informed them, and I never got to know why he was just standing there creeping me out. He clearly wasn't there for anything violent. Or was he? I'm a six foot seven tall guy, and I'm definitely not the first choice as a victim. But I did have very long hair, so maybe he thought I was a girl or something. Whatever the case, I hope to never meet again. This happened back when I was in fifth grade. I had just realised I had forgotten to make cookies for my school's bake sale, and it was the night before. My mum was naturally irked that I'd forgotten. But, as mums do, she helped me make some snickerdoodles. So we get to baking, 
and everything went a-okay until we didn't have enough eggs or sugar. Of course, my mum is not happy. It's 8pm, and she reluctantly grabbed her keys and hopped into the car. My sister was already in bed, and my mum said she could trust me to be home alone for the first time. Not even ten minutes after she left, I heard a tapping on our front porch. This was the creepiest, slowest tap you could ever imagine. I thought it was a bird or at worst a raccoon, but it was so methodical. This went on for five minutes. I curled up in the fetal position and rocked back and forth while waiting for it to stop. I eventually gathered the courage to take a peek outside the window. When I raised the blinds, I saw a man's face illuminated by my porch light. As soon as I opened the blinds, his eyes shot straight to the window, staring right at me. He smiled. I ran into my sister's room, locked the door and turned on the light. She woke up and started crying. To get her to stop, I read her the story. All the while, I heard the tapping coming from our front door. When my mum pulled up, the tapping stopped. I went to my aunt and uncle's house on a family vacation ten years ago. We drove from South Texas to some small town in Missouri. I can't remember the name. We arrived at 1am. The family consisted of myself, two younger sisters, mother and father. Most of the family was hungry from the long drive and wanted to see if a McDonald's was open. I was so tired from the long car ride and wanted to stay at the house. Mum said one of my sisters would be staying as well. I settled down into the living room watching TV, slightly dozing off, and I can remember hearing the pitter-patter down the hallway, and I assumed it was my sister just running around. She'd been eating sugary snacks the whole way up, and I get a call from my mum asking what I wanted to eat, and in the background, I could hear both my sisters arguing. I hear a giggle somewhere behind me. Stand up. Look around, and there's nothing. I asked my mum if my sister ended up going with them, which she confirmed. I stood in the corner of the room until she got back.